can you raise your hand if you are stressed? Oh, I don't want so many books to know that. <laughs> okay, if you are in a performance role, it's likely you are un under some stress. If you are in a leadership role, it's likely you are under some stress. If you are leading people in a performance role, you like to be under a lot of stress. <laughs> so why are we calling it action stations? Well, action stations is a term that I borrowed from the Royal Navy. And the action stations is what the fleet do, what the sailors do, when they are under attack. And my contention is that stress is now the enemy of our times. It's affecting our businesses, it's affecting us personally, our family lives, and it's affecting our communities. And when the fleet comes under attack, you've got options. You can do nothing, in which case you will take punishment. Or you can respond insufficiently, in which case you'll take punishment. Or you can raise your game and get to action stations, and action stations is both a place and a mental state to get to. So the centre of the book is 100 things you can do if you are stressed. So where do these come from? These are, these are things from sport, these are things to do with diet, they're to do with exercise, they're to do with psychology, they're to do with old wives' tales, they're to do with time management, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So I started talking to other people, and then it transpired that many people have big stresses in their lives. That we all think everybody else is perfect, we all think they run the perfect business with the perfect family, but actually the reality is, over the course of our journeys, there are times when we're coming under increasing uh, stress, often what I call X-stress, which is sustained stress um, uh, and severe stress. So it's a lot of stress for a long period of time. I then started to do a bit of research, and I looked at two of my hobbies, are, are sport and, and history, and I delved deeply into those two areas, because stress and performance is an under-researched area. So we looked at what the best sports teams do, we looked at what the best uh, aspects of history, and particularly military history. So in the book you'll find all sorts of characters, you'll find uh, there's Ernest Shackleton, there's Alex Ferguson, there's King Arthur, Mahatma Gandhi, and Edith Cavill. You don't normally get that in the same team. <laughs> there's all, I think it's about 15 or 20 different historical characters. Some of the inspiration comes from them, some of it comes from you, some of the people that I've worked with in the last uh, 20 years. Okay, what's in the book? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to spend too long telling you what's in the book, because if, if you are really interested, you can, you can buy it. <laughs> so, okay, the, the book's in three parts. The middle third is 100 things you can do if you are under stress. Um, the journalists have asked me, all right, Nigel, Tell us the top one or the top two. And it's kind of not like that. It's about doing 60 or 70 of them well and consistently. The examples here are Brailsford in cycling, and Woodward in the rugby. It's about doing 100 things consistently well. So not all these things will work for you, but all 100 work for some people. So the challenge is to find 60 or 70 that work for you. The front third of the book is about a challenge of what our understanding of stress actually is. And if, if you've been on a management course, they'll have told you three things about stress. One, a little stress is good for you. <laughs> Two, a lot of stress is bad for you. you. <laughs> and thirdly, stress follows the normal distribution curve, the bell curve. So you have on the x-axis, you have arousal or stress. On the y-axis, you have performance. And it goes like that. So you need a little stress to get you going, your performance goes up, it reaches a peak, and then it comes down first quickly and then slowly, the bell curve. Here's what we found. A little stress is good for you, not necessarily. A little stress is not necessarily good for you. A lot of stress is bad for you, not necessarily. <laughs> a lot of stress can be good for you. And what about the bell curve? That is complete nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work at all. In fact, the, I look back, the original research was done 100 years ago, torturing rats. <laughs> <laughs> so to the leaders I'm here with, I say, if your workforce behaves like rats, and if your management style is torture, <laughs> kind of might work. <laughs> the, real, the real shape of the curve is not a bell curve, it is the wobbly N. Most of us don't need much stress to get us going. You know, I didn't mean much stress when I arrived here this, this evening. You know, you're a head teacher, you walk into the class, your school, you don't need much stress. You run a factory, you walk into your factory, you don't need much stress in the room to get you going. The good news is, however, most of us can maintain our performance for pretty much a long period of time. We're pretty good at performing under stress as human beings. The interesting thing is, it is our health that suffers, not our performance. And the other challenge we found is many of us, and particularly leaders, are operating at the far end of the curve, just short 
of the cliff edge. So, okay, there we are, that's what's normal. Um, the back end of the book is about leaders, and it is about uh, what you can do if you are leading to help the uh, mental health and stress levels of your staff. So there are 15 strategies to support and help the people that are following you. And there's a final chapter on leaders of the future. This is particularly written for the young people, but uh, for those of us who might be around still in a few years' time, it's written for us as well, which is the future's going to be very different, and there are some big challenges coming, and stress levels are going to increase. So we're going to have to change all the way we do things. This is not a theoretical book, it's a practical book. I know these things work, I've applied them myself, and I've seen other people, some of in this room, apply them successfully. And if you apply these techniques, you can get your performance up by 20%, you can get your stress down by 20%, you can get your mental health up by 20%. So let's get to action stations. Thank you. <laughs>